Hi everyone, my name is Juan Camilo Alcaraz. Today I want to show you, uh, I want to continue working with RPR renderer and now I want to show you a couple of features related to different parameters or more uh, in deep parameters of the plugin and I want to explain how to enter to the production rendering and how to define or set up your parameters to make the final render okay so this particular scene is the is a continu uh, a continuation from the a previous scene when I explain how to create lights and work with lights inside RPR so let's see what we have here I just will going to show you let me launch the active shade This is what I have. Uh, you can see here in a previous video I explained how to define, how to set up the lights. I have uh, removed these two particular lights. I didn't like it how it looks right now so I just remove it because I want to give more uh, protagonism to these three uh, photometric lights. Okay so for my final shot I want to have a couple of deep of feel. I mean I want to have a uh, deep of feel that maybe show this vehicle and the rest of the image gets more blurred. So I was going to explain how to achieve this effect in RPR. Okay so I will move this <coughs> a little bit here. Let me see. Okay let's have this Okay, so what I have to do, there are a couple of workflows to achieve this particular effect. For example, in this particular example, uh, in this uh, scene that you can see, we are using default 3ds Max cameras. So we can work with these particular cameras, but uh, we suggest to use the new 3ds Max physical camera. Uh, the reason uh, is because the physical camera have uh, a couple of parameters that we can adjust directly from the camera uh, and make and uh, works uh, faster than working with the standard cameras. But I will going to show you exactly how this looks, how this works. So with the camera selected, I just press F10 to enter the Radeon Pro Render settings, and as like you can see here we have uh, something called override camera settings and we can enable the deep of field. I will going to enable the deep of field and you will notice the first thing when I enable this uh, the image immediately zoom in because the parameters we have here are not the same parameters we have here. For example the first parameter you will notice is different is the uh, field of view. So I will specify the field of view exactly the same as, as the standard camera to have exactly the same uh, angle and the same uh, zoom to the image. Okay, so what I am interesting to show you here, I have here a couple of parameters that will going to control the deep of field. The first thing I need is the focus distance. I have to define the focus distance for this particular camera. The thing is when I'm using these particular parameters I don't have any feedback from the scene because I really don't know exactly how far this camera is from this particular vehicle different than if I use the the values from here for example if I move this target distance I now I already know exactly that the car is around uh, 700 centimeters something like this 700 800 so I will put this value here 800 so right now my focus distance is exactly at the same point or the same place of the vehicle the other things I can adjust are this particular sensor width and the F stop this will give me the deep of field effect for example if I increase this value let me just increase a little bit if I increase this value and if I decrease this one I will start seeing the deep of field effect. I will going to decrease a lot just to 
make sure you see the, the, the effect I'm trying to achieve. Uh, you can see here, let me move this particular to here. Uh, let me zoom to show you exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, so like you can see, I decrease a lot this value. And right now I have a focus uh, target distance here when I have uh, this particular place is in focus and the other is blurred. So I can start playing with these values until I find exactly what I want. Like I said, it's uh, a little bit difficult because we don't have any feedback, but, but it's possible. So I will disable all these parameters. I will close this because I want to show you the main difference between using this workflow and using a physical camera. Uh, what I want to do is if I select the standard camera and I press C key, my viewport is converted right now to the, it's moving exactly to the same position. If I press Supreme uh, Delete, I will erase the camera I have. And right now this is not a camera viewport, it's a perspective viewport. But, but if I press Control C, I am creating a camera directly from my perspective view. This is a uh, faster way to replace your old standard cameras. You can just select your camera, go press C to move directly to this position, later press uh, delete to remove the camera, and then press Ctrl C, and you will create again a new physical camera directly from your new point of view. So this is what I doing. So right now, I have this particular point of view. Let me see. This is the camera, the physical camera 02. I will select this as my viewport just to show you exactly what it's looking. And I will go into launch right now again directly from this particular viewport. I will go into launch my active shade. Okay, so like you can see here, this is a mess, a completely mess because we have in this particular camera we have enabled the deep of field i was going to disable okay so this is what i have right now right now the cool thing to work with physical cameras is that i have feedback for example i can define exactly the target distance for example i want to see i want to have this as the main uh, target distance I want to adjust this particular value uh, or modify. I will leave this to uh, more regular values. I will enable deep of field. So when I enable deep of field, like you can see here, is that you have two different planes. You have three different different planes, in fact. The first one is the the focus distance you have. The these other two planes you have here are exactly the area that you will be uh, in focus. Uh, everything outside these particular planes will going to be the focus uh, and the, how much the focus you will going to be is defined by the zoom value. So, for example, if I start reducing this value, the image should show me this uh, a little bit more uh, in focus and the other part more blurry but it's not quite visible because I have to increase the zoom value I will going to double the value to make this more visible like you can see when you double the value again these uh, planes are uh, apart so you have to decrease more and the effect will going to be more visible I think it's Right now it's going to be more visible, like you can see the image start to moving a little bit and now like you can see here these objects in the back part of the of the boot is completely blur, this one too. There are a lot of grain, uh, we know there's still a lot of grain in this particular image but it's just a matter of waiting. But the thing here is that all these objects that I'm selecting are blue red, but this one is completely sharp. So 
I will uh, exaggerate a little bit more just to make this concept of this workflow completely clear. So I will put this value right now that you can see even the part of the vehicle in this part is starting to blurry. I will not going to increase uh, more than that because it's, I think it's clear enough. Now you can see we have this particular objects blur at the back, the AMD logo, exactly. Okay, so <clears throat> if this is the exactly the the shot I want to to render as final render, we have to move. I will going to close. I have to move and press F10, and instead of using the active shade mode, I will go to production render mode. When I switch to production render mode, what I have here is I have I can define exactly how much time or how uh, how much uh, render passes I want to to allow the render to to make, or how how much time I have to wait. For example. If I select pass limit to one th uh, one thousand, uh, it will going to render, and each time, for example, if I hit render, I will show you. Well, right now I will going to decrease. Sorry, I will cancel this. I will going to decrease the resolution. Okay. So like you can see here. When I hit render, it is start counting the render pass. Right now, we have a limit of 1,000 uh, render passes. When the, this amount of passes is uh, reached, the render will going to stop, and the image should be uh, completely uh, clean uh, with 1,000 uh, render render pass. If I don't want to wait or maybe I don't know exactly how much passes I, I need I can define instead of passes I can define a render time for example I will going to cancel if I instead of render pass the pass limit I define the time for example I have uh, only uh, I don't know 20 seconds to wait until I have to leave the the render I define 20 seconds and I hit render and like you can see, it will going to start counting. Right now, it doesn't set the the the, ta uh, the passes limits. It will going just to start counting seconds. Like you can see here, when it's reach the 20 seconds, it will going to stop. And this will going to be my final image. Like you can see, this is my final image uh, after waiting 20 seconds. Obviously, it's not enough time to have a clean image but this method will uh, allow you to define exactly how much time you have or you can uh, wait for a particular render to to finish okay so this is uh, more or less the things I, I really want to show you uh, I hope you uh, like this particular workflow to adjust the the deep of field using a regular camera or using a physical camera uh, okay, I hope you like it. Uh, see you soon in the next tutorial. Bye.